This book is the uh, tie-in anthology to my uh, BBC series, A Poet's Guide to Britain. Um, and so it certainly uh, grew out of that uh, series, and it sort of was a chance for me to extend the ideas that I had touched upon um, in the TV programme. The main one being, I suppose, um, my fascination with that ongoing conversation between the British landscape and her poets. And I think in Britain, in such a, a small island where we've got such an incredible variety of landscape, that conversation has been especially vital. So really, although I was able to talk about some of the most interesting landscape poems in the TV series, this book has enabled me to explore entire types of landscape across many, many more poems across a much broader spectrum of time as well. The book has been organised by association, and what I mean by that was that I was really keen that each poem should speak to the one following, or should certainly in some way listen to the one that has come before. So a first line will answer a last line, or will sometimes contradict it. But in some way, they are speaking to each other. And hopefully what this has meant is that there's a real a historical hopscotching, I suppose you could call it, in that we go from a poem from the 21st century to a poem from the 10th century. And so there's an incredibly broad range across gender um, and historical time. And one of the things that becomes most apparent from this way of organising, I think, is that the way that, that certain landscapes affect poets the way that that hasn't really changed over time. A poet walking into a wood in the 12th century and a poet walking into a wood in the 21st century, they might write about it differently, but the essentials of that experience haven't changed. So it's as if there's this eternal um, and eternal poet's voice, is, is how I like to think about it, responding to the British landscape. I also found quite a few surprises uh, while I was compiling this book. Um, one that comes to mind now is the poet Anne Riddler, who I hadn't ever really met before um, on the page. She was uh, very well regarded in the 1930s and for some reason isn't as much now, but I thought that she was a fantastic poem of uh, place, especially coastal landscapes and cliffs. Um, and another surprise that springs to mind is a poem about London called um, As I Walk Through London by Lawrence Binion. Again, a poet who was perhaps quite well known over the turn of the century, but has somewhat sort of drifted out of the canon now. But that's a beautiful poem about how a city can not only be a place of alienation, but can also be somewhere where we can find salvation.